Welcome to Intermediate German Grammar, presented by the German Studies Program at Elon University. This video belongs to a multi-part series on the conditional, also known as Konjunktiv 2. In this video, we'll begin with when and why to use the conditional. Then we'll discuss how to recognize conditional when you see it. Other videos in the playlist cover how to produce the conditional. The conditional is used to express hypothetical situations. In other words, something that could happen, but hasn't yet happened, or something that might have happened in the past if circumstances had been different. One example is on your screen. Here, conditional is being used to express what might happen if a certain condition is met. The sentence suggests that it's not snowing now, but it might snow if the conditions were a little different. That is a hypothetical situation. It's counter to actual present reality. To make this point even clearer, let's contrast the certainty expressed in the top two sentences with the hypothetical nature of the sentence at the bottom. The top two sentences are in the indicative. That's the verb mood you're most familiar with, the one you studied first when you began German the one that's emphasized most heavily in beginning and intermediate German courses. As the name suggests, the indicative indicates what is happening now, or has already happened, or will happen in the future. The top sentence is unambiguous. It is snowing. Indicative is being used here to indicate present reality. The second sentence uses the modal verb wild again in the indicative, to say something will happen in the future. Granted, the future is unknowable, which theoretically makes this statement a tiny bit hypothetical. But by using wird, we are expressing 100% confidence that it will snow. The sentence at the bottom is constructed just like the second sentence, but in place of the indicative wird, it uses the conditional form würde, which, by the way, is also a modal verb, to indicate possibility. Conditional here shows the hypothetical nature of the statement. When you say something like this, you aren't predicting the future. Rather, you're talking about the present, stating what could be possible under a different set of circumstances. Past tense conditional makes this difference between indicative and conditional crystal clear. The sentence on top uses indicative verb forms to make clear that it did not snow yesterday because it wasn't cold enough. The sentence below uses conditional verb forms to say what might have been true if conditions had been different. The fact is that it didn't snow. This sentence is contrary to that fact, explaining a hypothetical situation that did not happen but might have happened under different conditions. Now that we've examined the reasons why conditional exists and the situations in which you would use it, let's look at how you can recognize conditional and distinguish it from the indicative. Working left to right, you can see that both sentences use a helping verb. Hat for the indicative, hätte for the conditional, together with the participle geschneit. The difference is that the helping verb in conditional has an umlaut and a slightly different conjugation. We might hypothesize that the presence or absence of the umlaut is significant, as is the change in conjugation. The helping verb hat has no umlaut denoting indicative. The helping verb hätte does have an umlaut, as well as a different ending, denoting conditional. The next comparison is weil versus wenn. Weil is explanatory, so it's reasonable to assume that it is used when dealing with real events in the past and present. There are certainly instances where you might use weil and the conditional, but they're much less common. Let's be clear that wenn does not mandate the use of the conditional. Although wenn is often used with the conditional, it's equal, equally commonly used with the indicative. Here's an example. Immer, wenn es schneit, bleiben wir zu Hause. Here I'm using wenn and the indicative to say that if it snows, we always stay home. The final comparison is war versus wäre. As with hat versus hätte, 
the umlaut in wäre, plus the change in conjugation, tips us off that conditional is being used. Again, we could hypothesize that the presence of the umlaut and the different verb ending denote unreality, possibility, or a hypothetical situation. Let's sum up by making two points. First, we use indicative to describe real things that actually happened, are happening, or will happen. We use conditional to describe hypothetical situations that are counter to reality. Conditional exists in order to describe what might be or might have been. Second, conditional verb structures often resemble indicative ones, but are frequently de distinguished by an umlaut and a different verb ending. That concludes our presentation. Thanks for watching. Be sure to visit us on the web or follow us on Facebook or Twitter.